Welcome back, geographers. Today we're talking about the epidemiologic transition model. Now, this video is going to be covering the different stages of it, how it can connect to real life, and also how this model connects to the demographic transition model. So make sure you take out the guided notes. You can find them in the description below as we explore death and unfortunately, all the different ways that people die throughout the evolution of society. Not maybe the most happy topic, but it will be interesting. So earlier on this channel, we talked about the demographic transition model. That was looking at how societies evolved over time. Today though, we're talking about the epidemiologic transition model. This model is looking now at the demographic model, but now we're focusing on the different causes of death, focusing with diseases in each stage of the demographic transition model. Now, in order for us to understand the epidemiologic transition model, let's just look at the word of it. Like, where did this weird word come from? Epidemiology is actually focused on a branch of medical science that focuses on the control and distribution of diseases. They're monitoring, trying to track what's happening in the world and trying to see this evolution occurring and how to prevent stuff. So this model is going to be looking at each stage of the demographic transition model. We have five stages in the epidemiologic transition model and the first four connect really well. The fifth is a little bit different and we'll get to that towards the end of the video. So let's start just breaking down this model. Remember, we're dealing now with diseases and death. The first stage of our epidemiologic transition model is characterized by lots and lots of death. You're gonna die to famine, you're gonna die to pestilence, you're gonna die to animal attacks here. This stage is not where you'd really wanna be in. We actually have talked about this stage also on the channel already in our Thanos video. Is Thanos a villain or a hero? This stage is where the Black Death happens. This is where we're going to see a lot of death occurring. We don't have medicines yet. We don't have ways to prevent things. Even just from falling and breaking a bone could cost you your life here. So this is where society is going to be very fragile. It's easy to die. We're going to have a lower life expectancy. So that's important to understand. Stage one of the epidemiologic transition model, lots of death. We're going to see diseases be very essentially impactful at killing. We're also going to be seeing that we're gonna have a fragile society until we start to see this transition into stage two. This next stage is a little bit better to be in. We're actually gonna see less deaths here. We're also going to see a receding pandemic. So really what that means is we're going to be seeing less diseases that are impacting a large geographic area. They're not killing as many people. Again, connecting kind of back to that black death that we saw in stage one. One of the things that happens here as well is we see an increase in sanitation. People start to wash their hands. They're eating a little bit better of food. We see urbanization start to happen as well. The first time we saw societies move into this stage was actually during the Industrial Revolution. Now, there was an interesting thing that occurred here though. Stage two of this model does not mean that right away our death rate decreases. It actually does not. And there's a reason why. Take a second and pause this video, try to think. Why do you think when the Industrial Revolution happened that we didn't see a big drop off right away in the death rate for everyone? Some parts of society we did, but others, eh, not so much, especially when we're looking at lower income areas. Pause the video and try to figure it out. One of the reasons why people in stage two still died and we didn't see a decrease in the death rate right away was because of this urbanization that occurred. When cities first started, they didn't know how to set them up. So one big killer actually in cities was cholera, a disease that spread through water. It caused severe diarrhea and dehydration. And in low income areas where we have a high density of people living, sewer systems and the water systems weren't set up to support all these people. And so what started to happen is diseases got into the water and got people sick. So one of the reasons why we actually didn't see a right away drop off in our death rate, and particularly with people of lower income, is this system was set up and to fail. It didn't support the population. So they were at a disadvantage. And it wasn't until people started to realize this when then they started to fix the water system and started to grow and expand. So in stage two, we are seeing less death. We're seeing better living conditions, but we're starting to see some new growing pains. Cholera became an epidemic 
in urban areas, but they didn't impact the rural communities. So we still have issues in stage two. The next stage in our epidemiologic transition model is stage three. This is characterized by less deaths from natural diseases and more deaths by degenerative diseases. We are now living so long that our bodies are starting to decay here. Some of these are also human caused disease. This is where we'll start to have heart attacks, where we're going to have diabetes, where you're going to have cancer that starts to impact the population. We're living so long now that sometimes our bodies start to decay. Or we are also starting to eat so much food and we have such a big food surplus that people start to gain weight, they become more sedentary, and then that can lead to heart attacks and poor health conditions. So this is what starts to happen in stage three. And it's important to note that not all countries in the world are here yet. So Africa, for example, has a very low rate of cancer. That's not because they found the cure for cancer or they know how to live to prevent it. It's because a lot of people aren't living long enough to get to this stage where cancer starts to impact them. And it isn't until stage four that society is actually able to counter some of these degenerative diseases. So again, the ones that are caused by humans or just from our length of life. Now in stage four, society actually starts to fight degenerative diseases. This is where we have some more medical breakthroughs that happen. We are now doing surgeries. We're able to push back cancer. We haven't cured cancer yet, but we are able to fight it. We are now using chemotherapy and different things to try and prolong life and also increase the quality of life. In this stage two, people are also going to make different decisions. They're going to eat healthier and exercise more. Now, ironically, we'll also have people in our society during this stage that become complacent. They'll be more sedentary. They'll eat more junk food. And this connects back into the development of society. As we've moved further, we have more amenities. We have more luxuries that we can afford to have. And so people can get complacent. If you start to become more complacent and become sedentary and eat more junk food, then you might start to have different health issues. Again, connecting back to that stage three, where you're going to be impacted by human caused diseases. But stage four, the important thing here is it's categorized by fighting degenerative diseases. We are extending life even further. A lot of the developed world today is in stage four. This is also right at the end of that demographic transition model. We have evolved as society. We're no longer being killed by minor diseases. Now we're fighting cancer and heart attack and obesity and diabetes. So we have taken on new forms of diseases that we're fighting. The last stage of the epidemiologic transition model is similar to the last stage of the demographic transition model. Now there is some differences. One of the similarities is more people are going to die. In the last stage of the demographic transition model, this debated stage, the NIR of the country will go negative. More people start to die and the birth rate remains extremely low. However, they're different in why that is happening. The last stage of the epidemiologic transition model, stage five, can happen for a variety of reasons. The first reason is actually the evolution of disease. We will start to see diseases reemerge that are now resistant to drugs or different antidotes that we have come up with. An example of this would be malaria. We used to have eradicated malaria. We used DEET to kill all of the mosquitoes that were carrying malaria, and we no longer really saw this impacting the world. However, we saw DEET resistant mosquitoes start to evolve and come into the world. Now malaria is starting to be back on the rise in some parts of the world as it is now resistant. We're not able to kill some of the mosquitoes that are carrying this disease. And so malaria has started to come back. This would be an example of it. We're also seeing an evolution in disease with superbugs, where they're no longer being essentially able to be countered with penicillin and antibiotics. They've become resistant. The second reason this could happen is actually because of poverty. Now this might seem kind of weird, but one of the reasons why this is, is people who have less money are not able to always afford all the medication. One thing that is very expensive is healthcare. And when you are being prescribed something, it's really important for you to take the full dose. Even if you start to feel okay, you need to go through with the entire prescription. And if you can't, one of the issues that might happen is you might leave some of the bacteria alive. 
This would then allow them to slowly evolve. Now this takes a long time to do, but as bacteria are left alive and not fully killed off, they have the ability then to slowly but surely evolve and change and be able to become resistant. We've seen this with TB in Russian prisons and also just in prisons around the world where inmates weren't able to get enough antibiotics and so they only got a bare minimum and they started to develop a TB resistant strain. We've also seen this happen in other parts of the world as well as funding for prisons is not always the best. Now, the other thing that could happen here too, which could cause this, is the connected world. We've become globalized. This is a huge deal. This is great for our economies, it's great for travel, it's great for understanding things in a holistic view and understanding how we are connected as a human species. At the same time too, this means that diseases can now quickly travel throughout the planet. If you watch my video on Plague Inc, where I look at the epidemiologic transition model and also I look at the demographic transition model, you'll be able to see this concept illustrated perfectly. It's a really cool video. I recommend checking it out. You'll see a map of the world and you'll get to watch as diseases spread and kill off. It's a simulation game, so hopefully you enjoy it. The other thing too that started to happen is we are even putting now antibiotics into animal feed. In the agriculture unit, we'll talk about this as well, where we are giving all these antibiotics to chicken and to cows to try and make sure they stay healthy as we put them in feedlots and confined animal spaces. This happens a lot in the United States. Well, this allows then the breeding of bacteria to be able to become more drug resistant. So these things can all cause stage five. And it's important to note that the CDC and other governments are trying to focus on how to prevent this. So there's nothing here that you need to panic about. Hopefully though, you now have a good understanding of that epidemiologic transition model, how it can kind of connect to stage one through five of the demographic transition model, and also how it can connect to our world today. Make sure you check out my other video too on that epidemiologic transition model with Plague Inc. Hopefully it'll kind of help you better visualize these concepts in action. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it helped you out. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out to help support the channel and to get notifications when I post new videos. Until next time, I'll see you online.